Hello, welcome to Adobe Live. I'm Jack, and we're here today with brand designer and creative director Jessica, who also happens to be a breakfast taco enthusiast. If you're over in our live chat on Behance or on YouTube, please say hi and feel free to ask us any questions throughout the stream. Don't forget to check out and subscribe to the Adobe Live channel on YouTube and follow us on at Adobe Live on Instagram as well, where you can hang out with our community, find the latest streams and more. Jessica is going to be showing us how to create a brand identity for a hotel, going over how it will be rolled out as a system. But why don't you tell us a little more about you, share your work with us, and then we can get started, Jessica. Sure. Thanks for the warm introduction, Jack. It's great to be here. It's great to be on Behance Adobe Live for the first time. Uh, so great to meet everyone that's on the chat, too. Um, yeah, I'm a brand designer and I'm creative director uh, from Los Angeles, California. I originally um, lived there for several years, moved up to San Francisco, and now reside in Austin, Texas. I have been working in brand design for over 10 years, and I have worked both in-house and on the agency side of things. I've worked with clients like Google, Instagram, Patagonia, Fine Arts Museums of San Francisco, StockX, uh, just to name a couple, I started my own design practice a little over four years ago, where I've been working directly with founders and early stage companies to shape their brand from the ground up. And uh, fun teaser, I'm actually starting a brand studio with uh, my longtime creative collaborator, Danielle Leroy, who might be on the chat. Hi, Danielle. Um, we are starting a studio called Good Side, which will be focusing on brand strategy, brand positioning, verbal identity, visual identity, and art direction, creative direction. And our focus will be working with good people doing good things in the world. Uh, I figured I can just show some of my work on Behance really quickly. Uh, feel free to give me a follow if you're on Behance. Um, I'll just go over a couple of my favorites. Kibo is one of my favorites. It's a brand for people that love van life. So it's a it's sort of a um, community hub for people across the coast where they can go in and, and meet different people that are into van life and shower and, and cook food together. Uh, so they have hubs in San Francisco and Yosemite and Joshua Tree and, and all over. So I worked on the brand identity for this uh, and did the full suite there and then helped roll it out for initial launch. That was a really fun one. Yeah, the animation you had up there are super cool. Thank you. Um, and then uh, totally different, but Kinside is a really fun brand project that I did for a technology company that's modernizing childcare for today's working parents. So it's helping working parents find childcare. I worked on the full brand system. I art directed the photo shoot that I did with Diane Veladson, who's an incredible photographer in the Bay Area. Um, that was awesome. I love doing photo shoots and art directing them and figuring out how that expands into the brand system. Yeah, it looks like Annika Armand has shared a link to your uh, Behance and uh, your website. So be sure to awesome. go and follow, give uh, Jessica a follow. And we've also got Danielle in the chat saying hello. Uh, so excited to be launching Good Side with Jessica soon. Hi, Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. For now, you can go to my website and check out other stuff on strollyoff.com, but pretty soon it will be goodside.studio. So look out for that early next month. Um, I'll just go ahead and jump right in to, to Adobe Illustrator. We'll be doing a lot of the work today. Uh, Richard Otley is saying, love the van life project. Oh, thank you. That was such a fun one. And a really quick one. Some of my favorite projects uh, end up being ones that are quick sprints, uh, believe it or not. So I'm going to do a brand for a boutique hotel that is hidden in Topanga Canyon, calling it Hotel Topanga. Topanga Canyon is this beautiful canyon that is in the Santa Monica Mountains, and it goes straight to the beaches along the Pacific Ocean. I'm choosing this because one, I actually grew up about half a mile from the start of Topanga Canyon in the Valley of Los Angeles. Um, and I am also really passionate about doing more hospitality brands. So any hospitality founders out there, I'd love to do some, some, uh, some brands for you. I'm going to walk through some visual research that I've done. Um, so took a look at historical references that were really inspiring to me. I'm gonna do an overview of some of the visual identity pieces that I've already created just for the sake of time. Uh, I did some logo work, color palette work, type work already just to start sort of set that foundational work. And then I will expand into imagery styles. Um, I'll be editing photos to make them 
create a total vibe. Uh, and then I'll be creating a unique brand pattern and bringing that all to life in layouts and mockups. Uh, normally, especially when I'm working with Danielle, we're doing a full brand positioning phase that's really robust. It's like four to six weeks um, and it gets us really involved with the client. We're having uh, stakeholder interviews, we're doing brand workshops, we're doing audits of competitors and all of that. Um, and it's, it's a really fruitful, valuable experience. But for the sake of today, we're just going to keep it really high level. Um, and wanted to call out a couple of key themes. Those are things that I use as jumping off points to, to start to go into visual. Uh, design. So the first key theme that I identified that was sparking some inspiration for me was Topanga Canyon's natural landscape. Um, Topanga Canyon is absolutely beautiful. The name actually comes from um, a word that the Native Americans came up with, uh, and it means where the mountains meet the sea. And I really love that. It's such a beautiful way of yeah, describing definitely. Topanga Canyon. Um, and so I use, yeah, I look at key themes and then I start to pull references for them. I really like looking at historical references and doing research that are maybe out of, a little bit unexpected or out of, you know, out of traditionally where we look at inspiration. Um, so I pulled some like vintage maps. I was loving this pattern here that's going on. Yeah. Um, loving some of the, the type that's wrapping around. Uh, I think there's some cool things that we can do with that. And I think these are really old, like, vintage black and white photos that they were hand colorized and they're so vivid and, and beautiful um so yeah Topanga Canyon is just an amazing place I was looking you know starting to look at some of the shrubbery and the trees and and the you know foliage that's going on there as, as another inspiration point um also just looked at the actual road itself so uh Topanga Canyon Boulevard is the road that goes through the canyon and it's a really iconic road. It's super windy and it has a lot of history there because it goes from LA Valley to the beach. Um, so it just started pulling, you know, like old signs, which are so, so, so nice. cool. I love the type on these. This sign actually was like half a mile from my parents' house. It's no longer there. I oh, wish that's it was. cool. <laughs> um, but such a cool sign. And yeah. I love, I love the, the G is amazing. Um, yeah, like yeah. hand painted <laughs> yeah, vintage signs. So so funky and I love the structure of the type I love this little badge so um definitely took some inspiration for that for the logo which you'll see in a second um and then just looked at even just the curves of the road like I think there's the, the winding beautiful curves of the road around the hills and the canyons is just awesome um so inspired by that and then the last one uh is the history of Topanga Canyon is really interesting. In like the 50s and 60s and 70s, it became a place to escape for a lot of folk rock stars or the Mellow Mafia. Um, so it was a place like, you know, where all these, the Birds or Jim Morrison or Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young would escape uh, from the hustle and bustle of the Sunset Strip and go and retreat. Uh, so looked at, looked at their history there, um, looked at, you know, album covers, looked at some of the illustration styles that was happening, looking at the homes that they were recording their songs in, uh, lots, lots to, to get inspiration from here. Yeah, that lower um, right image is so funky. I know, I, know, <laughs> I, I love, love it. this, I love it. Yeah, that's an album cover of Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. Um, and then I always love to develop the brand personality traits. Um, this is a really great exercise to do with the client and then to always refer back to, to make sure that you're on brand and, and hitting the mark. Um, so I want Hotel Topanga to feel imperfect, but intentional. Uh, so eccentric, curated, stripped back, but full, raw, and natural, refined, but not indulgent or opulent, so subtle and understated. And that hint of counterculture, referring back to that mellow mafia folk, folk rock. Um, cool. So that's all the research that I've done. Lots there that we can start to pull from. Uh, I've already started to do some work around the logo. And spoiler, I was that really fall? inspired <laughs> by <laughs> Definitely this. Definitely see it. <laughs> yeah. This uh, Topanga Canyon sign. Um, so actually how I, how I got to this point was I took a screenshot of this sign. I brought it into uh, What the Font, which is a website that you can use, dragged it in, um, and it actually identified a font that wasn't too dissimilar from this uh, sign. Yeah, and then I just ended real. up customizing it. That G is the same almost, almost. It's not yeah. quite as funky, but I'm loving it. I knew I wanted just like a really <laughs> simple, classic wordmark. I love wordmarks. 
Um, but I do feel like it's a, it's a really long name. We're definitely going to need a secondary mark. So I did also work on a secondary mark. Um, and so I'm not going to show you how I did this today, but it was really easy. Actually, I did some sketches. Um, I, I love the idea of a California icon. I uh, also loved like the inspiration from that little badge symbol that we were looking at in that sign. Um, and love the where the mountains meet the sea. And so I was like playing around with this idea of like waves and mountains and the sun, which is a California icon. So like combining that all together. Um, use the rotate tool and rounded edges and corners. And that was, that was it. So uh, nice. I knew I just wanted it to be simple and clean. Um, and then looking again at the sign, started playing around with how this can all come together uh, in a, a full logo lockup for hotels or for restaurants or for things that are, you know, less traditionally corporate identities. I think that there should just be a whole suite or brand toolkit of logos and brand artifacts that you can play around with and be a little bit less precious with like the logo always has to be, you know, stacked this way or used this way. Um, so. Uh, but I think there, you know, it's nice to have like a full logo lockup, maybe a horizontal one. Maybe we can just like separate out the elements and leave them alone. Um, I started playing around with Mono 45, which is an Adobe font. Um, so I knew I wanted a mono typeface because I was starting to look at some of the typography that was happening on the signs and I was inspired by that. So I searched on Adobe fonts, mono, uh, and found Mono 45 headline. I like some mono typefaces can feel really technical but this one feels really like fun and funky um i love that j a lot i like that it has a couple different weights um so I'm, i think i'm going to use this for the brand typeface um what's everyone does anyone have a favorite mono typeface yeah let us know in the chat if you got well let's just say any what your favorite typeface is in general how about that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, Annika's got a question for uh, our beginner friends. What are some things to consider when creating word marks like these from inspiration to not make it look kind of exactly the same? Like how do you start with inspiration and kind of riff off of that to create something original? I think that that's a great question. I mean, I think one of the things with inspiration in general is like, I'm not looking at other designs or other brands that are hotel brands necessarily right. for inspiration. I'm looking at historical references. So that's one thing. Um, for word marks, I go in and I'm like customizing the forms as well. So if you're using like an existing typeface, like I actually took the bar of the H up, you know, a little higher, you can make the G a little funkier. So there's things that you can do to create ownability when you're creating word marks. Um, yeah, and I, I would just say, yeah, pull from unexpected places as a jumping off point, combine those unexpected places together to make it your own, make sure that you're laddering back up to some strategy work that you've done with the client. Uh, those are all great things that you can do. Definitely. I think that's a good point there for beginners. Maybe even if you're starting with, you know, a typeface, you can still kind of make it unique by modifying it, even just kind of like adjusting the tracking on the letters to get them a little bit more. Totally. You know. And that's something I did too. Like this doesn't just come out the gate like that. I tightened it up a little bit. I actually probably, if I wanted to, I could really fuss around with the spacing a lot, you know, like I could yeah <laughs> this isn't perfect by any means um but i kind of like the imperfect quality of it you know it kind of goes back to that that sign how like the spacing is so funky some other things that i'll do sometimes i'm not gonna i, I was kind of debating whether or not to do it for this one but sometimes what i'll do too to make it feel a little bit unique um and like hand done is i'll like use the roughen tool nope. not that rough yeah you gotta um, <laughs> really tone hone that roughen tool in it gets pretty yeah. crazy <laughs> <laughs> um but you can go in and it creates just like a really subtle, really subtle yeah. look. And you kind of have to tweak it to get it just right. Um, but that's something else that I'll do too, to make it feel just like a little bit more imperfect um, and hand done. Sometimes it makes my files really big because it's like a million more vector points. Than yeah, that's added. kind of the only downside is it does add a lot of points. So <laughs> proceed with caution. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think, you know, that, that could be something that could be cool, you know, for illustrations, for a lot of different things to make it just feel a little slightly imperfect hand done. Yeah. Um, um, Scott, uh, Scott D Das or Dossie in the chat. Sounds like a friend of yours. Um, oh, hi, so Scott. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Scott says mono variants in any family like basis grotesque, GT America, or get crazy with a mono serif. So mm -hmm. some thought mm -hmm. recommendations coming in. Annika says, I like all Ono type uh co fonts and also uh Brandon oh, Nickerson. No. 
Yeah. Oh no. Co. Type Co. I think is their name. I love their fonts. And yeah. Their type it. They're great. <laughs> There's a lot of great ones on Adobe fonts too. Um, they were kind enough to be on there. Um, okay. So I'm going to move on to color palette, which is something that I've already thought about too. I love the colors in this found photo of Topanga Canyon. I like that there's some, you know, more natural tones and then there's these pinks and like magenta use almost. So I literally just started eye dropping uh, from that photo and then customized uh, these colors and sort of tweaked them to make them look good together. Uh, but also, you know, starting to play around with, you know, type on colored backgrounds and seeing what color pairings can work well together. Um, I like that all of these play well together you can put text you know on top of a lot of these so i'm feeling good about that too um so i already have like logo color i already have a little bit of the type system down you know start danielle was kind enough to write some headlines for me um any of the bad ones are not written by her <laughs> um <laughs> they're written by me but um I, she had this idea that i love um that you know we could pull from uh, lyrics of songs are actually written in Topanga Canyon. Uh, so that, that was, could be a really cool usage for, you know, headlines and collateral. I always love to start with some headlines to set the tone before I jump into visual identity. And I feel like it's a really collaborative effort back and forth between the copywriter and the designer to um, create the, the brand identity and make sure that the words and the visuals match and, and really create the right vibe. Um, so yeah, so pulling, you know, some from some lyrics, pulling from just like research of historical references, you know, where the mountain meets the sea, um, and then some descriptive, more descriptive uh, sort of ways that we could describe the hotel. Um, I don't, I'm like bored of just using these structured like this all the time. I think it works well on the like logo lockup and stuff like that, but started playing around with how we can actually like incorporate the type um, along the road, oh, yeah. like almost inspired by that. I think there's a lot that we can do there. I just started this first one here. Um, so I'm gonna use this a lot, I think, in the brand system. And I think there's a lot of variations that we can do where the type is more organic, it's in, you know inspired and wrapping around forms that, that we're starting to create brand. So I already am feeling pretty good. These are just like, you know, really foundational elements of the brand, uh, but it's feeling a little Flat, like it definitely needs imagery, uh, definitely needs maybe like a texture or a pattern. So I think those are the first two things that I'm going to work on before we jump into actually building out the brand system. Um, so with photography, I love, again, love these found images, uh, but you know, we don't have the right to these. They're really low resolution. Um, so source some modern day imagery of Topanga Canyon and I'm going to edit them. Uh, to actually hopefully look like this. I found this filter on Adobe stock. I'm going to start using it as a jumping off point. Um, it's like a vintage book poster photo effect mock-up style. Kind of has some of the things that I'm liking. I kind of like some of the texture that's going on, but we're definitely going to need to edit it. It's definitely feeling a little dark. So what I'm going to do, this is the filter. This is what it looks like once you download it. I'm going to go ahead and go to some of the photos that I found. Some more uh, favorite fonts coming in. Uh, favorite fonts, Cooper Black, Sophia Pro, Montserrat, Anton, and New Spirit. I do like New Spirit, yeah. It's a fun one. A good one. We've also got, uh, that was from Richard, and then Corey says, uh, recursive, a variable font that can be a sans serif, serif, mono, and cursive, depending on the variation scales. Yeah, variable yeah, fonts variable are definitely cool. fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just worked on some recently for a client project, and they're great on web. Like, you can do cool things on hover, and yeah, they're awesome. Yeah. Um, so this is what the photo just looks like with the filter applied directly. It's definitely too dark, and I'm going to have to do some editing, but I think we can get it there. So I'm going to bring the curve up. A little bit. I'm gonna do. And this is after you applied the um, filter to it. You're just kind of adjusting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going in and adjusting. Um, you know, I think it's totally great to use stock uh, anything as a starting point, but I always like to customize it and make it, you know, my own. Uh, I think it's like a maybe slightly too textured. Like, I don't think we need that actual layer. So I'm just actually going to turn that off. It has a bunch of other textures on it. So I think that's fine. That's already feeling like a lot closer, but I want some of those 
pinks in there. I'm literally just gonna start painting pink on here. I know that's maybe a little weird, but we're just gonna do it. Fake it a little bit. Annika's asking, are we finding imagery for the brand? I think maybe asking where the where the photo references are from. Yep. Possibly. Um, so a couple different places. Some are from Adobe Stock. Some, uh, this one I think is from Unsplash. Uh, also used Creative Commons, which is a really great resource for like, like um, free, you know, uh, open rights, open license imagery. Okay, that's feeling a little closer, but I'm I'm gonna paint in some green too. Oh, I don't want that. Annika's also also Annika's full of questions today. I like this. <laughs> Annika says, "How did Jessica find imagery? Oh, how does Jessica find imagery that fits the brand values? And what are some key features that she looks for?" Oh, that's a good question. Um, so how do I find them and how do they fit the values? I mean, so for this, I'm, I'm referring, you know, back to like the historical imagery um, that I was really, really loving. Um, Topanga Canyon is, is a beautiful place. And so I think for the hotel, it would make sense to show where the hotel is living. Um, the scenery that's surrounding, it kind of has this uh, sort of peaceful place of retreat, place to go and escape the chaos. Again, sort of referring back to some of the key themes that we started to identify. Um, Later on, like I actually source some other imagery that's of the hotel. Um, and I refer back to the brand personality traits and kind of like imagined what the hotel like would actually look like to source those. So I'll show those in a little bit too. Um, so I'm already feeling like those are, this photo is feeling pretty good. Like it feels a lot more vintage yeah. than the modern photo that I pulled out. I like um, it. It's also kind of like a balance, right? Between like the imagery the reference imagery but like you said kind of making it your own you're kind of fitting it with the uh overall colors that you kind of pulled for the brand we'll see some of the purples and the greens totally yeah and i literally i think this is the actual pink that i was starting to paint on top here and then you know did some overlay techniques um okay because the magic of the internet i already saved this out uh <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and just put it next to, let's see. And this is, you're building up a, a document that you'd kind of eventually share with the client. Yeah. So this is like a round one, almost like what I would do for a round one presentation. Um, but you can see like kind of the before and after how that looks. Nice. Um, so yeah. And because again, the magic of the internet, I did three more. Do you have another yeah. uh, Jethro, another friend joining the oh, chat maybe? Yes. <laughs> wow, all my friends made it out today. Hi, Jethro. Jethro, People... <laughs> let us know in all caps that you're the best in the biz. So. Wow. Way to play it subtle, Jethro. <laughs> um, he asked if I could give him a shout out. So major shout out. Jethro is a very talented uh, <laughs> brand designer. Uh, shout out Jethro. He was one of only four guests at my wedding. Fun fact. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, we kept it small intentionally. It was, oh, I was gonna know, say, I hope that was yeah. intentional. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't invite 150 and uh, have <laughs> four. Um, uh, cool. Okay, so I'm feeling about the, the imagery. I think that's like a good jumping off point. We can we can work with those in the brand. If I were, you know, if I was really getting picky and this was for a client, I'd probably want to make them really consistent. Like right now, they're not feeling completely consistent, but I think that's totally okay for the purpose of today. Um, the next thing that I want to do is I want to create like a texture or a pattern for the brand. Um, right now, you know, we have some type that's feeling a little bit delicate but the logo itself is really bold um, and the mark is pretty bold. And so I think that we need just one other delicate item um, to play around with and to add depth and dimension to. So looked at this originally, I was like, oh, I think it'd be really cool. Maybe we would just like live trace this and just kind of mess around with it and create your own. But I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Um, I found, again, on Adobe Stock. Adobe Stock is like my new, my new favorite place. I found, these Ooh. vintage illustrations. Yeah, looks like some um, trees. Yeah. Maybe like They're some, like, oh, I'm blanking on the term. Yeah, I know what you're talking <laughs> about. Like, um, yeah, <laughs> the printing technique you're doing, right? Yeah, I don't know, yeah. I don't know, it's like on the edge of my mind. Like Maybe it's to be in chat. Like, uh, 
No. Yeah, someone tell us what these are. <laughs> um, but I really, you know, I think some of these really remind me of the vegetation that's in Topanga Canyon. I was like, maybe we should just use these directly. But again, I kind of want to make them feel a little bit more customized and ownable. Like, again, this feel maybe slightly too retro. Like, I think we should do something that feels a little bit more modern. So I'm going to just outline it as a first step. That already starts to get a little bit weirder and funkier. And then I'm going to do dashed line. Yeah, some interesting textures coming through. Yeah, I'm like really loving this. Um, maybe I'll do... Also gets back to like the winding road kind of an idea mm -hmm. once it's kind of abstracted to this level. And you can kind of tell it's a tree, but like not, you know, it doesn't have to yeah. be. It kind of reminds me of the that map reference. I'm going to maybe do like rounded cap too. This is another big vector file. Um, so I'd probably go in, you know, expand this. And then I'm, I would probably go in and clean up all of these little guys um, before final use. But, mm -hmm. but because of the magic of the internet, I've already done some of that. <laughs> Prepared. I'm close this file because it's pretty big. Um, so I'm going to just start playing around with do. I should use my swatches. I'm horrible at using swatches. I should say, Jethro knows this, he's in the chat. Uh, I am not the cleanest, most organized designer in the world. Um, but, you know, that comes later. <laughs> yeah. But in terms I, of like, <laughs> go ahead. I try, but like, it's usually like I clean something up and then I make a mess in the file again and I go back and clean it up. It's a process. So it's, it's a process. <laughs> totally. And I, I like round ones and things are where you can like when you're in the exploratory phase, I feel like that's where you can really uh, start to, you know, get loosey goosey and then you'll hone in as a brand direction selected. So I'm like, I'm loving that on the color background. I like where it's super zoomed in. So you can't really tell it's a tree, but it's kind of a tree. Actually, mm -hmm. like some of the imperfections even still showing up. Um, I'd probably clean that up for real. If we were doing this for the client but we'll leave it be for today jethro forgives you <laughs> so all <Thank> forgiven you. <laughs> thank you appreciate that uh just don't look at my type sizes uh later on i just use the, the scale up or down like really loose uh whenever i watch people design that are organized i'm like wow oh, okay like that's like you so you like <laughs> Like, okay, right now it's at 32 pixels, that's surprising, or points. Um, I even like how this is starting to pair with the type. Mm -hmm. like we could like have it kind of wrap around. I don't think we always have to have it wrap around, but... Um, yeah, the type in those kind of positions looks like they could be, uh, like, and maybe they're landmark indicators, like highway sign yeah. indicators. Yeah, I love, I think it's just a nice little nugget detail to have too just it makes it feel a little bit more ownable um cool uh yeah i'd probably wrap this text around but i think i'm feeling really good about the brand like pieces uh so i think i'm gonna go in now and start to design um some sample touch points very cool so well, as you're kind of going through this process you're kind of like doing a little bit of a gut check to see like as you build elements, do they all kind of fit together? Do I need to go back and adjust the color palette or change something about the type? 100%, yeah, and that's a great point. I actually always start with three posters as the very first thing. Most brands don't even print posters, but, <laughs> or need posters, but for me, it's just a really good way of like flexing the brand, of figuring out like, okay, this is what a layout would look like with a photo only. This is what it would look like with type and pattern only. And this is what it would look like with one layout, logo layout style. This is another, you know. So I always love to start. This is like the very first thing that I do once I'm kind of at the point where I'm at, where I'm like, okay, I feel like the pieces are kind of starting to work. Now let's like jump in and start to stress test it. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to design some posters. Hotels can print posters, right? I don't know. That's a thing. Yeah. I mean, uh, even especially with this kind of a style that the kind of 
vibe you're going for, I think it would be cool to have like they could be like reminiscent of the of like vintage travel kind of posters or totally. even like band vintage band posters. Totally. Or like postcards, like Oh yeah, postcards. Too. Yeah. There's like a lot. I could see them like in the lobby, you know. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Annika says the light UI is throwing me off. Everybody uses dark. <laughs> I, I don't know why I changed that a while ago, and I just roll with it. Uh, <laughs> sorry. No shame. It's a personal <laughs> preference, you know? Um, <laughs> don't judge me. <laughs> uh, I'm going to grab the logo. And, uh, that's like the easy one to do. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that already that looks like a postcard center or like a... Mm -hmm. I'll do pink even. There's like a little bit of contrast issues, but and this is where like you know I'd maybe get to the point where I'd start to play around with color, but not maybe not yet. I'll I'll wait. I'll do a couple more touch points. Um, maybe I'll do another photo on this side, but half of a poster. then I'll do for those of you that are just joining us Jessica's working on a hotel brand here Hotel Topanga we're uh, putting together some concepts based on the kind of brand system that we've got going on so far pink definitely does not work on yeah. blue <laughs> that's okay very cool. So yeah, this is uh, te really testing those colors. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which it's it's such a good overview. It's just like a really the three up poster is just like mm -hmm. such a quick way to do that. I'm gonna grab some more tape. I'm gonna bring in those dots again, but like maybe in a different way. I feel like this poster needs like little details. Again, this is don't look at my uh, font size, anyone. <laughs> The like text over landscape is a completely different style, but kind of reminds me of Wayne White. Have you seen Wayne White's paintings? No. Oh, <laughs> they're like out. Wayne White does like Wayne White was the like creative director on like Pee Wee's Playhouse, like the show oh, back in the day. That's and, so funny. Uh, I was just talking about Pee Wee's Playhouse. Yeah. <laughs> now he makes these like really large. He buys like vintage paintings from like a thrift store and just paints like really large text on them it's really interesting. okay Is, are they often bad <laughs> are they often bad words yeah sometimes yes yeah. okay yeah i have seen those <laughs> yeah i could totally see that um has anyone seen the, sh the movie ingrid goes west uh i have not they, oh it's a great movie with Audrey yeah. Plaza. it's it's okay. great but uh it, it's basically about like influencers in la um and one of the influencers, her husband, is an artist, and he paints paintings like that. And it's oh, like okay. <laughs> kind of a funny, like I don't know why it's just kind of like a funny, funny thing he does, and like sells them for you know a lot of money. Um, I'm gonna grab the. I like these. This type. Louis in the chat. Louis saying, "Might have to use this idea in the future." I always love a reason to make more posters. Yeah. And, and it doesn't have to be posters. I mean, you can also do it with like, it could be like a stories for Instagram or something too. But I think just like three different layouts of something. Um, I'm going to grab the horizontal. Yeah, because it's hard for it. clients to kind of visualize. The, I mean, like you can see the brand, but you know, it's a lot. It helps them kind of visualize the final, if it's in some kind of a context, how it's going to look. Totally. And it, and it helps as a designer to just be like, oh, this is where there's holes. Like, oh, okay, like maybe I, I need to add in an illustration style or something else. Or this color palette really isn't working together here. Um, and I'm going to bring in that pattern. And I could see this pattern being really cool in like letterpress, like formats like if it was just like blind embossed or something even yeah that would um, be really cool <laughs> <laughs> one day when we have all the printing budget 
Yeah. Definitely. Contrast is an issue, so I'm going to change the opacity here. I'm going to like 60%. Mm. And you're adjusting so that you've got good contrast with the type kind of over top. Yeah, especially for like the smaller type. Like I think that's probably even still an issue, so I might want to like mess around with. Uh, the way the type and the pattern sort of interact. Um, let's, those are feeling pretty good. I don't know if we bring in this badge other places. Maybe that goes in the bottom and it's blue. Uh, other side. Maybe like every poster has a badge. It way. really looks like a sun there, like <laughs> yeah, the placement. Kinda, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a nice nod. Um, Cool. I'm feeling good about these. Something else that I really like to do when I'm like doing round one presentations for clients is um, I really want to create a vibe on every single slide. Like it should feel like it's really evoking the brand tone that you want to create. So I'm going to actually do something kind of weird, but it's kind of trendy right now with case studies. Um, and I'm going to do like a full photo background. And not yes. immediately, just like tonally shifts it. Yeah, it's a great way to kind of like switch from just having like a stark white kind of presentation mode to something that feels like on brand. And it feels like you're in Topanga Canyon. I mean, some people would argue that it's like distracting from the design, but I think like for brand round one, like it's all about evoking that feeling that you want to evoke. So I think it's fine. Um, okay, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good about these posters. What do y'all think? Umicorn says that's nice, so that Umicorn's cool. seal of approval. Awesome. All right, let's move on. I'm going to do some other applications. I'm going to do a tote, because what would a brand presentation be without a tote? <laughs> <laughs> um, this tote mock-up I found on Adobe Stock also. Uh, again, like when I'm looking for mock-ups to show in presentations, I'm also looking at the vibe that they're evoking. I want to make sure that this could actually like live in the brand world that I'm creating. So like this feels like it could be a chair in the hotel that is Hotel Topanga. Um, so that's you know, something I keep my eyes out for as well. I'm not just going with the first sort of tote mock-up I find. I'm just gonna for... <laughs> Annex and I agree with that and actually used the same mock-up a couple days ago. <laughs> It's a great mock-up. I love the lighting of it. Um, We're like around like one that chair. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say I like that chair a lot. Like I want it for my house. Yeah. Um, for a round one kind of presentation like this, are you already thinking about what kind of products make sense for the brand, or are you just kind of thinking about presenting a wide variety of contexts? No, totally thinking about you know, what the hotel will actually need. I'll often ask clients to like, hey, what are your highest priority touch points? Like, what are the things that you definitely need the brand applied to? Um, so I'll have a good sense of that um, by by the time I'm working on round one and we'll make sure to show it. Um, cool, okay, easy peasy. Yep, uh, and it works perfectly. Yeah, all right. Um, I think website, you know, everyone has a website these days. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and do like a quick uh, homepage hero, landing page hero. Um, normally for a lot of clients, like I'll show a couple of, of website pages to show like what a homepage hero would look like, what an information dense page would look like, or, you know, like different sort of types of content. Um, I love to there's this, this trend with like big logos and a footer lately. This isn't a footer, but I just like love that that look. So we'll go roll with that. Um, and yeah, then I've seen that in like the footer and like the um, in the nav too, like brands opting for like really big text. Yeah, no, totally. Actually, good side. Our future website it has a really big logo and the, the homepage hero. <laughs> <laughs> We're leaning into it. Um, okay, so these are a couple of photos that I sourced for um, the hotel and how I found these. I, I think a lot of these are from Unsplash, but I really just wanted to find images that felt like they would, you know, be Hotel Topanga. Um, yeah. And I actually am not going to edit these 
for like how I was doing the brand imagery because I think with like food photography or location or architecture photography um, I think you should just show it as it is and highlight the beauty and modern qualities of it versus like if I made these feel vintage you'd be like is that place still around yeah it, right you know <laughs> I think that's an important distinction like photos of the you know actual location food product should you know less stylistic and more like actual showcasing the the thing totally like i don't want to eat a really heavily filtered like, yeah right of a hamburger <laughs> you know <laughs> um you I also just like don't want to give people like unrealistic expectations of what something is yeah totally. people see through that stuff <laughs> Um, I'm liking this diptych approach because then you can see more of the, the hotel. Um, I'm just gonna create a quick nav. Um, oh, there's my awkward font size. Uh, let's do. Now, when you so this is kind of like we're presenting the idea to the client, kind of um, yeah. presentation mode. Once we get once you get into like the brand guide and stuff like that would you provide a more like comprehensive uh like website kind of style guide or anything like that totally yeah actually for most projects we will do at least some web design um like typically like the highest priority pages or like the pages that are most brand forward so typically like the home page and the about page um but yeah we'll always include really robust brand guidelines um like typically, you know, 50, 60 plus pages. Uh, and then also like a web style kit as well, which is what we'll identify like, this is the button style, primary right. button style, secondary button style. Yep. Um, but yeah, for round one, I don't worry about it. And I will caveat that like to a client, hey, um, look at these applications as broad strokes, as proof of concept, things like navigation, you know, yeah. menu items are not what we should be giving feedback on today. Definitely. Um, um, okay, this is still feeling maybe I could need something else. I'm going to bring in the pattern. Uh, but I don't want to obstruct the photos, obviously, that much. So let's see. There are like 40 different ways to mask things. In oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can um, use uh well i mean you go ahead and share share with us share the knowledge i, I mean the only one i i mean the one i'm the two i'm using are like the actual mask oh where is it right now oh it's because it's already masked so i can't do it where mask like that one where it turns it to a mask and then the other one i know is like where you take a shape layer and then like do what is it command is that it? Seven? What is it? I have to like I have to do it. Hold on, what is it? Let me try it right now. Is are you talking about like draw inside? No, it's okay. No, but I was like watching an Adobe Live and someone did that and I don't actually know where that is. I don't actually know how to do that. The one I'm talking about is like where you place it behind a vector shape and then do Oh yeah, and then yeah, make seven? a clipping is mask. Is it command seven? Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess it's a clipping mask, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't. Yeah, command seven. Annika says Command Seven. There we yeah. go. Yeah, <laughs> we made it. <laughs> I did it. I don't know. People always ask, like, "What was that shortcut you just said?" I'm like, "Uh, I don't know. My fingers just know how to do it." Right, I don't exactly. Know what it is? And you're like, "I don't know. I just did it. Let me undo and then do it again, and I can tell you." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, I'm gonna put another photo background behind because I think that's the cool vibe, vibe setting. Um, but maybe I'll do a different photo. Do that one. It's pretty cool. And yeah, when I'm like designing, of... oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Uh, when I'm designing round ones, I I'm doing like a lot of zooming in and out, like where I'm looking at things over or overview, and then I'll like zoom in really close to look at details. Yeah, it also has the feeling of the, like, the photo you've got there with the gradient kind of in the background, similar colors. Yeah, I like the blues and the greens. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. 
I want to be in that pool right now. Actually, I want to own that house also. That's great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to do some social. Um, for social, I'll do like a color background. So these are, would be like, this looks like some kind of like stories type of a thing or shorts. Yeah. And I typically will do like posts or stories. It kind of just depends on what's more relevant for the client. I don't feel like I'm bringing the badge in enough. Like, actually, I maybe I put the badge up here again, little. Is Tim all, Tim also a friend? Tim Lampy or Lampe? Oh, I think we're we're Twitter friends. Yeah, but we have not had the honor of meeting in person. I don't think. Gotcha. Tim says, "Hello, Jessica, big fan from Twitter. Brand hashtag Brand Designers Club. Is that a thing? <laughs> what is it? Brand Designers Club? Yeah." Um, it should be a thing. I don't oh, think okay. it's a thing. Well, it's now it's like a Twitter, thing. <laughs> yeah, Twitter Brand Design Club. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's how I know him because his work's great. And he's a great brand designer and art director, I believe, and Twitter land. Yeah, I like that little icon in like, the nav. Too. I think that's yeah, it's nice. Um, and then it would scale probably nicely on mobile. And then you that know. could be like the home button instead mm -hmm. or something. I don't know. Um, okay. I'm gonna grab the logo again. I'm really bad at using like reusable symbols and stuff. Sorry, people. Um, so you're kind of back to kind of like the zooming in and out. Um, you're using that to just kind of see like, does this hold up? How does it look, you know, farther away? Closer yeah, up? and like what's missing? Like what am I not showing enough of? Um, like, am I using too much of the green, you know, like, and then, yeah, so just kind of getting a, a bird's eye view a little bit, and then we'll, like, zoom in to, to focus on the details. Um, I'm going to grab some more type. Go up to we my are... handy Danny headline. Oh, go ahead. We are about halfway, so just cool. giving you, uh, letting you know, and then also I will say, uh, once again, we're with Jessica. Jessica's working on a brand for Hotel Topanga. So we're uh, moving along pretty quickly. Got a lot of stuff going on. Lots of... Uh... Yeah. I actually feel like we might be able to do more touch points than I thought, which is awesome. Maybe. We'll see. I don't want to say this now. Yeah, right. <laughs> Let us know in the chat if you have any questions or just say hi. Let us know if you could go visit Hotel Topanga. <laughs> would you uh, Would you want to go stay here? Or where you'd want to go vacation if you had a, a dream vacation? What would, you, what would be your dream place to visit? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I still haven't been to Mexico City and I've been wanting to go to Mexico City for a long time. Um, yeah, that's on my my big list of places to go that's this year, one. hopefully. What about you? Uh, I want. I would love to go to South Korea. That would be my dream. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking at you know like I different ways of. of playing around with the logo like again I, for a really corporate identity I would be really precious about you know splitting up the logo and stuff but I think for more of a lifestyle brand um there's you know we can create brand artifacts and just create a lot of different ways that the, the logo can be used oh. do you tend to be very um this is a, a good question I think and uh because I think it, people have different approaches do, do you uh do you tend to be really strict when you're putting together kind of like a brand guide or does it depend on the client that you're working with? I'm very strict once I get to the brand guideline phase. Gotcha. So, um, <laughs> yeah, if we have time at the end, I can show you some like maybe sample brand guidelines or something, but I feel like yeah, it I get like, so much. It, it, so it also depends. Like I've been asking, I'll ask to, um, like who's going to be looking at the brand guidelines. What is your plan? you know, for brand rollout or like post-brand handoff, like, you know, who are you going to be working with? Is it going to be a freelance designer? Is it going to be your in-house design team? Like, what is their skill level? Um, is it going to be your marketing team? You know, that doesn't have design experience. So right. that depends how how mm -hmm. strict 
I need to be. Um, and oftentimes I will provide reusable templates for things like social media or decks or something to um, make sure that it's easy to implement post handoff. You can't, you know, obviously templatize everything, but I think where you can be helpful yeah. to the client, they appreciate that. It's tricky because you want to strike, like you said, that balance of like making sure that it's, you want to make sure it's usable for, you know, the audience that you're building it for. And sometimes um, you need to have that like flexibility to uh, build out. You can't estimate every kind of like context. So. <laughs> Yeah. And it's like that fine balance where it's like you want to create a unique vulnerable brand, but you also want to make sure that you're creating a brand that's like easy to implement post handoff. So you don't want right. to like give, you know, a super illustration heavy brand to right. a company that doesn't have an in-house illustration team yeah. or budget for <laughs> illustration, you know, so stuff like that. Um, all things to consider. Uh, yeah. So that contrast is like an issue. Um, you know, I'll turn down the opacity that helps a little bit, but do you just kind of do you kind of like go by eye kind of like your own kind of uh go by eye with contrast did you ever kind of like use the um like contrast checkers or anything like that totally yeah for um for colors specifically i'll use contrast checkers um and there's a couple different ones out there i'll just um whatever the industry standard is like as of late, I forget what there's like all different terms for them. And they're all like weird fun, like W, <laughs> the 40, but they're not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll check color contrast if I'm making like type color recommendations and like background color recommendations. Um, this I'm more like looking just like at like, that's too busy. So I'll, you know, I'm looking at stuff like that. That's more eyeballing it. Um, so yeah, um, I'll just do, do a color i think we've used a lot of photo backgrounds so i'll just do a color background for that one um, annika i think annika's asking if you what contrast checkers uh you use but it sounds like you just go by the the wicked <sighs> guidelines yeah and to, and also you know clients will have spe specific specifications that they want to refer to as well so it is a little bit dependent on clients but it's um, if it's not that all, you know, it's industry standard. I am not an accessibility expert at all. I should learn more about that. Honestly, it's really important. Um, and it's definitely something to consider, especially as you're designing in like digital formats. Yeah, for those of you that don't know, WCAG stands for Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. And they just kind of have some, uh, there's like a list, you can find it online. I think it's like w3.org or something like that, that lets you like, look at um they give you like contrast ratios and some font size guidelines and stuff like that to make sure that your um content is accessible to certain there's like three levels there's a a a and a triple a so yeah and then it depends on like how small the font right. is like all that so um yeah so i try to in final brand guidelines handoff or like web style guides i'll make sure that the like the body copy and the headline fonts are all uh, accounting for that yep. and it's pretty easy to do like you go in and you like type in your hex code like mm -hmm. uh so yeah it's there's a uh, there's one on adobe colors you can oh, actually cool. pull into if you're using libraries um you can pull in your colors directly from there to uh give them a check oh that's great to know um i'm gonna do some coasters because that seems Ooh, like a yeah relevant that's a great idea hotel um i don't feel like i'm using the badge enough i mean i kind of am <laughs> but i feel like it can be heroed a little bit more um so i think you know coaster calls for definitely the badge um let's see i'm gonna do a type on path tool Second. I'm gonna do some like type wrapping around that. Oh, you're gonna use the tool. Is there another way to do it? I just, you can usually just like click with the text. 
but you switch to the tool. I, it's just. Oh, wait, what? Oh, you don't have to like switch to the tool? No, you don't have to switch to the tool. <laughs> you can what? just click on that. Wait. Oh, no, no. Oh. not. Well, yeah, not with the circle. I guess I should have specified with oh, a like closed outline. shape. You have to like make an opening. So you'd have to like cut an opening in the shape. So uh, got it, probably got it. makes okay. sense to use the tool in this case. But <laughs> yeah. OK, cool. That's good to know. I I remember like back in the day, I didn't know how to do that. And so I'd go to like, no, no, no shade to anyone that does. What did I do? Like, uh, the warp, like warp. The envelope yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> and it was like never quite what I wanted. And then I like finally figured out how to do it. <laughs> um, yeah. You learn. I mean, we all learn and grow. <laughs> definitely. No shame. <laughs> um. All right, I'm gonna do. I'd probably go in and put the circles, the little circle dividers, but I'm lazy. I'm not gonna do that right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> it'll be periods. It's fine. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. That was a fun flash, right? I don't know what happened. <laughs> oh no. Oh. Okay. Uh oh. Oh. Try it. it looks like yes. Yeah. Okay. That was a fun moment. <laughs> um I like this, but I'm going to mask it. Um I always forget which the order is. I'm like, is it behind or in front? All right. There we go. And then it jo uh, I don't know if it's Joan or Yoan. Uh it says same, I believe, in regard to the <laughs> Type out a path we were talking about. Oh, I don't know if that nice. means the warp. <laughs> yeah, or... yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Annika's reminding us to save as well <laughs> since we almost had a crash. Oh. <laughs> Good idea. I'll save really fast. I make it the rainbow for a second because it's a big file, but that's okay. There yeah. we go. Oh, that wasn't so bad. Um, where's my little guy? There you go. That's you know, I like if this was letterpress coaster, that would be so cool. Or blind emboss, like if that was just the texture mm -hmm. was just blind emboss. I'd put my drink on that. I don't know if you want to give an explanation of what that means for the people in the chat who are not print savvy. Oh yeah, so uh, like blind emboss is when there's no ink and there's just an indent into the paper, um, and so. It would just have this really cool textural effect to it. Um, so I could imagine that this pattern having being just the blind emboss. Uh, and then that could be printed with ink. I mean, it'd be cool. Like, I could probably go and find a mock up of like letterpress or emboss coaster or technique and then apply it here if I was presenting to the client to like show that off. Or in the past, too, when I've been trying to sell like a printing technique, all um like actually just like go through found images and pull up like hey this is what a blind emboss is this is mm -hmm. a gold foil this is metallic ink so just talk about like the different options that we can do yeah some um, printers well a lot of printers will also let you get like samples as well like samples of different techniques and uh that they offer uh, and specialty inks and stuff like that papers totally oh i miss print i don't don't, near, don't do nearly <laughs> as much print anymore as I would like to. Yeah. I, I just also just like you said, convincing clients to do specialty printing can be hard. It's tough. Yeah. Um, but it pays wanna... off. Yeah, it does. Especially for like things that are high end, you know, consumer mm -hmm. packaged goods. It really does make a difference. I'm sick of this orientation of the logo. And again, we don't have to be precious about it. Something else that I kind of just do uh, sort of intentionally is like for like the posters specifically, I'll have like it bookmarked. Oh. Um, or book ended on, oh, oh no, wait. why do I keep oh, getting no. this? Okay. Uh oh. There isn't Good enough memory. Yeah. That's mm. so weird. 
Uh oh. Oh no. Maybe try doing a save and reopen and see if that mm. alleviates it. it. Might be because there's so many kind of images. images. That's okay. It happens. I even I downsize the images to be JPEGs or like lower JPEGs. But I think it's the pattern too, probably. It doesn't like the pattern. It's working on it. Yeah. I can see it. Yeah. What do you like to do when you're not in front of the computer? <laughs> uh, well, my new favorite of um, love is my dog. I just got a dog last Yay. year and he's <laughs> he's amazing he's the joy of my life his name is Howie uh we did not expect him to be so large but he's like 75 pounds <laughs> um, okay, I'm, I'm gonna close it summer womp, womp. okay let's reopen it what type of dog He's or like just a, a mutt, just to make. He's a mutt, but he's yeah. like a boxer pit, like I don't know, mix. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's yeah, the best. I have one of those that was supposed to be a big dog, but ended up not getting over fifty pounds. So I had the opposite. Oh no! Hmm. Why? There isn't enough memory. This has never mm -hmm. happened to me before. Mm -hmm. Jeopardy. Um, <laughs> Annika's saying folks over on the YouTube chat want to see Howard. <laughs> oh, I'll, uh, I can pull but, him up. But maybe try switching um, under view, switch from GPU to CPU to see if we can get... Uh, Where is that? Preview down below. Above. Hit preview. Yeah, it's like Command Y. Try that. Command Y. Oh, oh, now it just crashed. Okay. Oop. We'll try it again. We'll try it I again. feel confident that we're going to get it back. The other thing we could try doing is you could try removing just for the time being some of those images and see if you can then switch back out of preview mode. We're just in, it's currently for everybody watching, we're in uh, outline mode essentially. Oh, we're back. There we go. I feel com I sh I'm going to delete these two though because <laughs> anything, anything with a pattern probably isn't too happy. Okay. We're back. All right. And I feel good. I feel like we've still made a lot of progress. So that little hiccup Indeed. was no big deal. Um, all right. Um, so what I was going to say, though, is like when I'm doing the like posters, I'm kind of looking at like, you know, bookending them a little bit too. Um, like image, image, plane, uh, which is a nice kind of like breather, uh, breather moment. So I, I kind of do that with some of these where it's like, you know, flat color, flat color, full bleed image. Um, so it's another way, another thing I'm thinking about. Um, okay. I'm going to do for this one, I'm going to grab my type. Yeah, and it's saying it might be a new update with the Mac. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's just a big file. I'm going to blame it on myself because, uh, I didn't downsize the pattern file as much as I probably should have. But it's a new computer, so it should handle it pretty well. <laughs> um, I think I'm gonna play around with a different way of like doing the, you know, type kind of wrapping around, responding mm -hmm. to the shape it's in. If I was, you know, if I was presenting this again to a client, I'd probably make sure that it's equally spaced mm -hmm. out and all of that perfect. But for this, we'll just kind of eyeball it. Sorry, Jethro. <laughs> Jethro's, <laughs> Jethro's a very organized, he's a very creative designer. He's also a very organized yeah. designer. <laughs> um, Stian is joining us. Welcome, Stian. Good evening. Hope it's a good day out there. That's what they're saying. Oh yeah, Annika saying Victor over on YouTube has a good call. Maybe closing the uh, the Photoshop files might help with memory. Oh, I didn't even realize really we had. Uh, P I forgot yeah. that we had those files open. Okay, if it does it again, I feel like I feel like we're out of the 
I might, I'm about to jinx it. I'll just quit. <laughs> Oh, all right. All right. I, I, everything else is saved, but we're good. Um, and that one was easy enough to do. I'm not very precious. I used to be a lot more precious, I think, about uh, my designs. But after doing it for a few years, you kind of get over that. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's cool. Yeah, it's like a different, I mean, I don't like, I don't know if I completely love it, but I think it's like another way, again, because this is like four round one presentation, mm -hmm. it's like another way that the brand could live. And like, that's probably something that I would call out to the client while presenting. Yeah, we're um, just kind of showing options. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just like another way the type can interact in the brain. We've got about a half an hour left. So make cool. sure you oh, get your doing... questions in. So good on time. I feel like I can <laughs> I can finish this whole brand. Awesome. I know that you mentioned earlier on in your presentation that um, the messaging really drives all of the decisions that you make. So I'm curious to know a little bit about like how you onboard uh clients like those some of those sort of brand traits that you um ended up pulling is that like an interactive like a call with the you have with the client totally um yeah so the the first phase of all brand projects we call discovery and brand positioning and uh that is a you know, four to six to eight week potential process. It's first two weeks of discovery and research. So that's really where we're like getting a lot of inputs from the client. And so that's in the form of uh, in, like kickoff call, which is like typically a half hour. Then we'll do individual stakeholder interviews, which are like interviews with the, the core sort of client team, but also any other company employees that we should talk to um, that will give us insight into the company. Um, and what their goals are. Uh, and then we'll do audience interviews. So if it's a new company and they don't really have any actual customers yet, mm -hmm. uh, we will interview potential customers. So we'll go out into our own network and source some, or we'll ask a client to help us source some. Uh, and then we'll do a oftentimes two day brand workshop or one day brand workshop or a couple hour brand workshop, depending. Um, and that's like a series of customizable uh, exercises that we create for the client. And that's when we'll start to tease out brand personality traits. Um, you know, we'll, we'll ask questions like your, you know, if your brand voice were a celebrity, like what mm -hmm. brand voice would it be? Uh, or what celebrity would it be? Um, we'll do scale exercises, which is like, you know, you have like one word that's, you know, like simple. And then on the other side of the scale is really complex. And then we'll have them drop dots on that. So that's like another way that we tease out personality. Um, we ask, we ask just a lot of questions. So it's, it's really like our time to listen before we make any strong recommendations. So, um, and it makes, it makes for designing the brand a really fruitful experience for everyone. It's really a fun collaborative process. Um, and I think you get better results because of it as well. Um, I'm just doing like a stationary thing here. Yeah, I see that. I'm gonna like. I'm gonna. I'm gonna like pull in. Oh yeah, like a little. To make it show. feel a little bit more real, a little bit real, of a handwritten yeah. note. I don't. I wouldn't. I don't know. This is a note of William James concerning his health, but no one's gonna read that. It's. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's cursive enough that it's. Yeah hard right. To read. It doesn't. It's fine. <laughs> Uh, but you know, that just kind of, again, helps, helps make it feel, feel real. I think it's also um, important with stationary. It's something that, you know, it's, it's important with stationary to see it with real content on it so that, you know, like, do I, have I left kind of enough space for somebody to actually use this? Yeah. Right. And like, that was another, I like, I was like, oh, I think the blue is like lower contrast, but that's okay. It can almost be more of like right. a watermark for stationary. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe the, should we put like a little logo on the, 
Oh yeah, pencil. a little cute like how they put on again fancy printing on the pencils or whatever, the, like f foil prints. Mm hmm. I think for this, I'll probably just do blue, but foil would be really cool. Uh, Annika, I think you just answered this a little bit, but Annika asks, how long does Jessica take for the first iteration when she's not live? Um, <laughs> only an hour and a half. I mean, no. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? This is better. how this is how fast <laughs> yeah. Jessica always works. I don't. <laughs> um, no. So, so phase one, I always tell clients like you're not going to see any design work in phase one. Really, you'll maybe see some mood boards or some like early ideas, but um you're not going to see like any big design presentation until phase two which is really like the brand identity phase um so for the first like four to six weeks that's the brand positioning phase then we'll move into the brand identity phase which is another six weeks total but um i like to say that we'll only go in our little cave for about two to three weeks uh for a brand design oh. round one presentation so it typically takes about two weeks or so um to present uh around one presentation and in that round one presentation, we'll have um, typically like two to three concepts. Uh, it depends how excited we're feeling about it or how confident we're feeling. And then, um, yeah, we'll also make sure that we're showing messaging with that and really making sure that we're pairing the visuals and the verbal identity together. Uh, yeah, so it takes about two weeks. And then, you know, sometimes we'll, I'll, I often, I'm not an animator. I love working and collaborating with other creatives. And so oftentimes I will bring in an animator. Uh, shout out to Stina. I don't know if she's here. She's in, I think, Australia right now. Actually, she travels all over oh. the world. I don't know where she is. Um, <laughs> that must be nice. To be yeah. Right now. <laughs> she's from Sweden. Yeah, she's, she's cool. She has a cool <laughs> surfer, surfer partner. Wow. Um, That's awesome. But, uh, I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna just put this on the sign. Really yeah, quickly. perfect. Um, and the circle sign there, perfect. Fit. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like because we kind of want this to be, a, you know, sort of secluded hideout place for people to come and relax and retreat. Mm -hmm. I don't think it needs to say Hotel Topanga on the signage. I think it could kind of be like a if you know, you know kind of place. Yeah, works with the um, Brian traits. You wrote up at the top. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like. This image is not actually a mock-up, like, but I couldn't find the mock-up of a sign that I actually wanted that fit the vibe, that kind of felt like it was in the same family as the rest of the stuff. So I actually found this sign image on Etsy and then like photoshopped out the current sign imagery that was on it. But sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. I'm not gonna use that for you know, yeah, right. a case study or anything, but I think yeah. for a brand around one presentation, that's totally fine. Um, mm -hmm. Cool, okay, so. I'm gonna do. We've got a couple more, couple more touch points I want to do. Do you all like? I'm trying to decide. Do you like white or green? I, think I like green. I don't know. Maybe that's kind of an obnoxious. I don't know. I think with the inside being kind of like the white and blue, I'm tempted to go blue and white for the envelope as well. But yeah, that's it's kind me. of a nice invert. We'll have no, to see I see what the chat has to say. Cool, we can come back. I mean, in our imaginary world, we can do two. Oh, yeah, we can do color. that. That would too. <laughs> Yoan is saying, hello, a fellow Swede, looking very good, by the way, getting inspired. Oh, thank you. Uh, Stian has a question. Have you ever worked on a brand where the client that, in the end, ended up hating one element? Like um, a figure, I think, like maybe like a mark or a color for no apparent reason. And what's the best way to deal with that? uh like in a brand design round one or like after you're supposed to be like done with the brand <laughs> um we'll just say either way cool hopefully um, not actually, at the end but. yeah hopefully not at the end <laughs> um i actually just had a client that uh i did a big presentation a couple weeks ago and they were like great we love the system but like we actually don't like the logo mark at all and we don't like the alternates that you were pre like presented in the appendix of the round one presentation again i'm not like precious at this point like it should be a true collaboration um definitely i just want to make sure that it's not coming from like a subjective place so if it's like okay what don't you like about it do you feel like it's not hitting the yeah. brand positioning that we've developed do you feel like it's not latching on to the right themes does it look like something that's really 
upsetting to you? Like, like, are we not leaning into the right things tonally? So I think it's, it's asking the right questions after that. Um, and again, that's where having a really strong brand positioning foundation before you move into visual identity is great to have because you can refer back to that and point back to that. And, and if you disagree with what they're saying, which like I have, like, you know, that's okay to disagree with clients. You can give them your honest opinion as an expert and then, uh, you know, kindly say like, I disagree. I'm happy to do more revs for you. Um, I have in my, my contracts, like really clear, uh, you know, we get two or three rounds of revisions. Yeah. Very important, important note there. So, about yeah. Contracts. So that's, and if they decide that they want more than what's in the, uh, you know, the proposal or the contract, I will then say, cool, I'm happy to do, I'll oftentimes like throw in one for free, you know, like I'll be nice about it unless they're really being not nice. Uh, be nice. And then uh, after that, Jessica yeah, throw in something for free. <laughs> I'll do some more. Yeah, that's really <laughs> true. I'm totally a pushover. I'm a people pleaser pushover. So, uh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I will, you know, then I'll say, okay, cool. I'm happy to do another rev like free of charge. Um, but you know, we are at our max number of revisions after that so uh i might have to charge you hourly or whatever if we're not still not feeling good about it so um got yeah. just under 15 minutes and got cool. a couple questions now we've got questions uh, of course like flying in <laughs> oh, cool. uh, we've cool, got cool. a question from louisa what has been the most meaningful project you've worked on oh that's a good question um, a couple years I worked ago, I worked with Patagonia, um, to help protect, uh, rivers in the Balkan Peninsula. They were working on a film for that. And that was a really impactful project that I got to nice. do a uh, design for. Yeah. That was with the previous agency that I worked at. Um, yeah, I think that's one of the most impactful ones, but there's so many, I mean, we, re I really try to work with purpose-driven companies doing good in the world. So, oh, I wanna do that. Hmm. Let's save that. Um, so that's like really where I get excited. Um, so every client that I take on is passionate about what they're doing and hopefully putting good back out into the world. That's really what I aim for. Nice, yeah. It's always nice to work with uh, clients that you kind of align with on like a personal or moral level. Totally. Why did I get out? Oh. I'm not sure. I'm like, I don't know why it just turned green or black and white for no reason. Yeah. But well, there we go. I'm not sure. liking the sizing, so I'm doing. You're trying to add a little bit more space yeah. so it's not so <laughs> close to the edges. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to. Uh, Addie in the chat has another question, and I'm going to probably reworded a little bit um how you cool. deal with how would you deal with a um a client or a design brief where you that doesn't have a lot of direction maybe a little bit vague or um they don't really know what they want kind of a thing um so that's where the again this sort of like initial discovery research phase comes in and the brand positioning phase comes in um at a minimum like even if a client already has brand positioning in place or thinks they already have brand positioning and strategy in place. Um, I'll have a series of one-on-one -on -one conversations with key stakeholders. Um, and then uh, we'll have them fill out a questionnaire. Uh, that's like a starter kit questionnaire that asks some of the questions that I want to tease out more. And then I, I like to do a brand workshop uh, regardless, even if they're not like paying for brand positioning or that's not necessarily included or they think they've already done it. Um, that's really the time for us to get everyone in a room to talk about, you know, what their goals are, to talk about where they want to take the brand. Um, and then I synthesize all of that. Uh, and like, if I'm not doing brand positioning with Danielle, uh, you know, I'll just synthesize all of that and kind of like regurgitate to them. Like, Hey, this is what we heard. Um, but that's why I work with Danielle almost exclusively now because she creates beautiful brand strategy. <laughs> um, that is really the essentially creative brief and jumping off point for all creative stuff. So it's ask a lot of questions up front. Um, you know, you can do a Google Doc 
like questionnaire essentially if they're not providing the right details jump on calls with people you know, a lot of creatives are like not into phone calls i'm one of them but it's really important to talk to your clients <laughs> yeah i think sometimes things can get lost in translation like clients have their own lingo and you have your own lingo and you can kind of be talking past each other via just email like they may not understand you know it quite what you're saying depending on the terminology totally and and that's why i think it's just so important to be like okay you said you want it to be elegant um elegant can mean louis vuitton or it can mean right. something you know so, something else so like what what do you mean by elegant um actually i don't want to do that let's do i'm doing these hotel signs now uh or the uh what door signs for the hotel now like the do not disturb or like come on in i love that idea I think this will have to be probably our last element and then we'll do like a recap oh. of everything because we got oh, like... Oh, we almost finished. Yeah. That's okay. Almost. No, that's totally Not fine. quite. <laughs> <laughs> that's totally fine. Um, I'm actually shocked we made it this far. Yeah, we got... There's a ton of stuff on here. We got through a lot of stuff. You know, even with some... Even with uh, some hiccup. crankiness from Illustrator. Yeah, I, I'm blaming that on myself because this I know is a huge file and I was really testing the limits. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, but I was like, I, I got a little too confident, I think. It's a new computer. It's fine. Uh, let's do green is like, come on in, maybe. And then... And if you're sharing links to your website again and Instagram, if everybody wants to follow Jessica, Jessica, will you be sharing this project yeah. out on social? Uh, yes, I will. I will. I will share it on Instagram, on Twitter. I, I'm like way more active on Twitter for some reason about sharing my work than on Instagram. I've like always kept Instagram kind of personal, but it is a goal of mine to like try and, I mean, I'm public. It's not that personal, but like, I don't ever post design work on there for some reason. Um, but I will, I will for this. Um, so yeah, feel free to follow me on Twitter too. It's like Jay Strelia. Um, yeah, I'm getting, your, uh, I'm getting your link and posting it in the chat. There we go. Thank you. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm more vocal on there about design stuff. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll be sure to post. Cool. All right. Well, that's the last one then. I feel, I just think it's like utilitarian and simple, so I don't want to complicate it too much. Yeah. You want people to get the message. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think it's also like color coding too. Like mm -hmm. maroony is like, do not disturb. Come on in. It's green. Um, cool. I mean, I can put maybe one more photo behind it. Spice it up a little bit. Nice. Cool. All right. Should we review? Yeah. Do a little recap. Cool. Um, cool. I think like for, you know, an actual client presentation, I would start with the logo. I maybe wouldn't have all these dividers here, but we can, we can just go ahead and I'm going to colorize the logo again, like setting the mood from the very beginning. Nice. Um, I'll promise I'll start to stop designing right now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, cool. And then, what is the, what is the, I always forget what the presentation mode is. Oh, there you go. Um, yeah, very nice. Uh, so yep, so we got the logo, really simple, I had iconic word mark inspired by the sign, sign historical references be pulled. I have the secondary mark, starting to play around with different layouts for those, bringing in some taglines and type color again I'd probably delete this for like an actual presentation but I do like to set up as I'm as I'm talking through the system I do like to set up like hey this is where this color palette's coming from uh it's inspired by this the color we got I actually didn't really use that dark gray black that much uh, but we'll leave it for now and brand guidelines I'll often talk about like color ratio like you know how much color we use of each like I use the blood of light pink very rarely Typography, some wonderful headlines. Thank you again, Danielle. She's an amazing writer. Inspired by this road. Got these organic layouts of type. And yeah, these kind of like sign inspired or marker inspired dots. 
photography inspired by those vintage colorized photos, created our own using some Adobe stock filters and customizing it quite a bit. But yeah, it really got that look that we were going for. Create some more. Probably would work on, again, uh, making them feel a little bit more cohesive, but fine for our, our show today. Um, taking inspiration. Oh, I took this out. Yeah, because right. Of... We have to skip our patterns, but that's okay. <laughs> but you know what it's like. <laughs> yep. We can see them here. Um, yeah. And then we got some posters just showing the range of where we can take the brand. Um, yeah, I'd probably watch for things. Like, actually, if I were going in and presenting this, I, I would clean the negative space out because I don't like how that looks there. But got a tote. Website homepage, social. This is some contrast issues, but I could see this being like a moving video or something, and that would that would solve it easily. Some coasters. Again, this would be really cool if it was like blind embossed or as well letter press. Some stationery with. William James Health note. <laughs> the matches. This was also a Adobe stock. Um, mock up right now. And then our door tags. Mm -hmm. And and typically what I would do, um, you know, I typically show like 10 to 15 different touch points for each direction. I would do like a summary page at the end of the concept showing um, some of the key touch points or like key elements of the brand. Um, and then like at the very end of the whole presentation, after going through all three directions, I would show a summary slide for each. So that those are quickly, like easily referred back to as the client's giving feedback and we're discussing. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for hanging out. Um, please follow Jess, uh, Jessica on social to see where this project kind of lands. Um, stay tuned for Ben and Ari up next with the Adobe Fonts Show. They'll be showing you how to add variable fonts to a website, which we kind of touched on today. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, thanks, uh, Jessica. And uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Bye for now. Thanks so much, Jack. Bye, everyone. Thank you.